This week, hundreds of small earthquakes have been detected at Mount Rainier, and this is the largest swarm of quakes in over a decade. But researchers say that this is normal behavior overnight. In the stillness of the early morning, Washington residents awoke to a sound that seemed to come from deep within the earth itself. Windows rattled, floors shifted, and pets howled in confusion as a low rumble passed through the ground. At 3.14 a.m., seismographs across the Pacific Northwest lit up with activity. The tremors weren't isolated or fleeting. They came in waves, one after another, echoing from the slopes of Mount Rainier. For most people in Seattle, Tacoma, and the smaller towns that dot the valleys below, the quake was unsettling but survivable. For scientists, however, it was something else entirely. Within hours, the United States Geological Survey issued its rarest warning, a red alert. This wasn't speculation. It wasn't a cautionary advisory. It was the highest level of concern, reserved only for imminent or ongoing eruptions. The mountain that had been silent for centuries was now rumbling awake, and the Pacific Northwest found itself thrust into the crosshairs of one of the most dangerous natural forces on the continent. Mount Rainier is no ordinary mountain. Towering 14,410 feet above sea level, it dominates the Cascade Range like a sentinel of ice and stone. Its broad shoulders are cloaked in glaciers, more than 30 in total, holding more ice and snow than the rest of the Cascade volcanoes combined. To the millions who live in its shadow, Rainier often appears serene, a backdrop for family photos, weekend hikes, and postcard images of the Pacific Northwest. But beneath the snow and forests lies a restless giant. Rainier is classified as a stratovolcano, a type notorious for violent, explosive eruptions. Geological records suggest it has erupted dozens of times in the past 10,000 years, often unleashing pyroclastic flows, lava domes, and lahars, volcanic mudflows capable of scouring valleys clean. Its most recent significant activity is estimated to have occurred about a thousand years ago, though minor steam eruptions have been reported since. Scientists consider Rainier one of the most dangerous volcanoes in North America, not because of its frequency, but because of its proximity to population centers. Over 3.5 million people live within a 60-mile radius of the volcano. Cities like Seattle, Tacoma, and Olympia sit within reach of its potential hazards. Valleys carved by rivers such as the Puyallup and Nisqually act as natural channels that could carry deadly lahars directly into communities. Unlike the solitary wilderness around Mount St. Helens, Rainier's footprint overlaps with dense urban sprawl. When experts call Rainier the sleeping giant of the Cascades, it isn't hyperbole. It is a literal warning etched into maps, emergency drills, and the uneasy memories of past eruptions across the Pacific Ring of Fire. The first sign that something unusual was happening didn't arrive with a violent explosion, but with a subtle pattern of tremors. Over several weeks, Rainier's seismic profile shifted from occasional microquakes, normal for such a massive mountain, to swarms of shallow earthquakes clustered beneath the summit. To the untrained ear, they were no more than faint rumbles. To geologists, they carried the distinct rhythm of magma moving through underground conduits. On the Liberty Ridge route, a team of climbers reported hearing what sounded like a freight train beneath their feet. They described cracks opening in the ice, fissures where steam hissed out, and the unnerving sense that the glacier itself was alive. Two dozen park rangers were dispatched to assist in monitoring the slopes, some of them trained in rescue, others in scientific observation. Their presence was both practical and symbolic, a sign that the mountain's tranquility could no longer be taken for granted. Witnesses in nearby towns added their own accounts. Residents of Ortin, a small community downstream from Rainier, spoke of dishes rattling on shelves and pets refusing to calm down. In Puyallup, parents reported being jolted awake by what they thought was a passing truck, only to realize it was the mountain itself. Seismologists noted that these tremors were not random. They struck in clusters, building in strength, then pausing as though the earth itself was catching its breath. By the time the swarm reached its peak, instruments detected harmonic tremors. Low-frequency earthquakes that often signal magma is forcing its way upward. That was the tipping point. Rainier was no longer just restless. It was preparing for something larger, something that could transform the Pacific Northwest in a matter of hours. When the United States Geological Survey issues a red alert, the message is stark. An eruption is either happening or about to happen.
Such alerts are rare and their implications are profound. On that morning, USGS officials made the announcement with measured words. But the gravity was unmistakable. A red alert means that every emergency plan on paper must be put into motion. Local governments activated command centers. Emergency sirens, long silent, were tested in towns like Orting and Sumner. Evacuation drills, once treated as theoretical exercises, suddenly became urgent rehearsals for survival. Schools prepared buses, hospitals reviewed disaster protocols, and shelters began opening their doors. The announcement also mobilized federal agencies. FEMA staged supplies at regional hubs. The Pacific Northwest Seismic Network ramped up monitoring, deploying mobile sensors and drone surveys. The National Guard placed units on standby, ready to assist in mass evacuations. For residents, the red alert was both a shock and a confirmation of their worst fears. The mountain had stirred, and scientists were no longer speaking in cautious hypotheticals. Red alerts are issued sparingly because they carry immense consequences. A false alarm can erode trust and create panic fatigue. But in this case, the data left little room for doubt. Magma was rising, gas emissions were spiking, and the ground itself was bulging. Rainier was not merely restless, it was awakening, and the clock had begun ticking toward an eruption whose timing and scale remained terrifyingly uncertain. Behind the scenes, geologists and volcanologists worked around the clock, parsing every signal Rainier offered. High-resolution seismographs revealed the harmonic tremors growing stronger. Ground-based GPS units recorded subtle deformation, as though the mountain was swelling under unseen pressure. Satellite thermal imaging confirmed the crater temperatures had risen beyond seasonal norms. Fresh fumaroles had opened near the summit, releasing plumes of steam and volcanic gases into the thin alpine air. Gas spectrometers measured spikes in sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide, classic indicators of magma nearing the surface. These chemical fingerprints were unmistakable, the signatures of molten rock degassing as it ascended. Combined with seismic data, the evidence painted a clear and chilling picture. Magma was intruding into Rainier's upper chambers. Scientists compared the data with known precursors from other eruptions. The harmonic tremors resembled those that preceded Mount St. Helens' 1980 eruption, though Rainier's signals were deeper and more sustained. Satellite deformation maps looked eerily similar to those captured before the 1991 Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines, which became one of the largest of the 20th century. The comparison was sobering, but Rainier posed a unique danger. Its massive glaciers meant that an eruption could trigger lahars on a scale unmatched by most volcanoes worldwide. Even a moderate eruption could send torrents of mud and ice cascading down river valleys, obliterating communities in their path. Unlike lava, which tends to move slowly, lahars can travel at highway speeds, sweeping away bridges, homes, and lives with little warning. As data accumulated, the consensus among scientists hardened. Rainier was primed. The question was no longer if, but when, and whether the world was prepared for the devastation that might follow. Not everything about Rainier's behavior fit neatly into scientific models. While the swarm of earthquakes and gas emissions matched typical volcanic precursors, other anomalies defied easy explanation. Some of the tremors originated deeper than expected, hinting at magma reservoirs farther down in the crust. The alignment of seismic activity suggested not just a single conduit, but multiple pathways feeding the system. One puzzling feature was the irregular rhythm of the quakes. Instead of steadily escalating, they came in bursts, separated by long pauses. Some scientists speculated this indicated a complex plumbing system, with magma hitting blockages before forcing its way upward again. Others suggested tectonic stress might be interacting with volcanic pressure, creating a hybrid event. Adding to the mystery were odd electromagnetic readings detected near the summit. Instruments picked up fluctuations that could not be easily explained by gas venting or magma movement. Some geophysicists hypothesized that superheated water interacting with glacial ice might be generating these signals. Others cautioned against drawing premature conclusions. The uncertainty was unsettling. In volcanology, prediction is always an exercise in probabilities. But Rainier was refusing to play by the book. The models built from decades of study could not fully capture what was happening. This made issuing forecasts both urgent and dangerous. If the eruption came sooner than expected, 
lives could be lost. If warnings were overblown, trust in future alerts could collapse. In the halls of research institutions and emergency command centers, debates grew tense. Was this a prelude to a catastrophic eruption or the mountain releasing pressure in smaller bursts? The only certainty was that Rainier was restless in ways scientists had rarely seen before, and the unknowns made the red alert even more ominous. While scientists debated models, ordinary people lived the consequences of uncertainty. In towns like Ortin and Puyallup, residents packed emergency kits, loaded cars with essentials, and practiced evacuation routes they had only ever seen on maps. Schools dismissed classes early, and parents clutched their children a little tighter, aware that the mountain looming on the horizon could decide their fate. Hospitals braced for mass casualty events, stockpiling supplies, and preparing triage plans. Businesses shuddered, unsure whether they would reopen. Farmers along the Nisqually River watched the mountain uneasily, aware that their land lay squarely in the path of potential lahars. Some residents reported eerie changes, steam rising from new vents on the glaciers, the faint smell of sulfur on certain mornings, even the sound of ice cracking deep within the mountain. For those who had lived in the region all their lives, Rainier's silence had been a source of comfort. Now its rumblings were a reminder that nature's power could turn familiar landscapes into death zones overnight. The psychological toll was heavy. Anxiety rippled through communities, amplified by news coverage and social media. Town hall meetings turned into tense gatherings, with officials struggling to balance reassurance with honesty. Families debated whether to stay or flee. For many, the view of Rainier, once a source of pride and inspiration, had become a looming threat, a snow-covered specter hanging over their lives. History offers grim reminders of what happens when volcanoes awaken unexpectedly. In 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted with little warning, blasting away its north face and killing 57 people. Entire forests were flattened, rivers choked with debris, and ash spread across multiple states. The eruption forever changed how Americans viewed volcanoes in their own backyard. Even more haunting is the story of Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia. In 1985, a relatively small eruption melted part of the mountain's glacier, sending lahars roaring into valleys below. The mudflows buried the town of Armero, killing over 23,000 people in a single night. Scientists had warned of the danger, but evacuation orders were delayed, and the tragedy became one of the deadliest volcanic disasters of the 20th century. Further back in time, Krakatoa's 1883 eruption in Indonesia unleashed a tsunami that killed over 36,000 people and altered global climate for years. Tambora's 1815 eruption caused the infamous Year Without a Summer, plunging temperatures worldwide and devastating crops. These examples linger in the minds of volcanologists and emergency planners. Rainier carries echoes of each. The explosive potential of St. Helens, the glacier-fed lahars of Nevado del Ruiz, and the capacity to impact climate like Krakatoa and Tambora. History doesn't just offer lessons. It serves as a warning that when mountains stir, the consequences can ripple far beyond their slopes. For Rainier, the parallels are too close for comfort. As Rainier's activity intensified, the world's eyes turned to Washington State. International news outlets ran live coverage, framing the mountain's snowy peak as both beautiful and menacing. Scientists from Japan, Chile, and Iceland offered their expertise, recognizing that what happened at Rainier could yield insights into volcanoes in their own countries. NASA satellites tracked thermal signatures, while military imaging systems provided high-resolution data on surface changes. Drones mapped new fissures, and airborne sensors sniffed the gases rising from the summit. The coordination was unprecedented, a global scientific community pooling resources in real time. For residents, the media frenzy was overwhelming. Some tourists arrived, bizarrely eager to witness history, while locals packed highways trying to escape it. Hotels in Portland and Spokane filled with evacuees. International aid organizations began staging supplies, anticipating that thousands might be displaced if Lahars destroyed valley communities. Beyond the immediate response, scientists speculated on the global consequences of a major Rainier eruption. If ash reached the stratosphere in sufficient quantities, it could dim sunlight in cool temperatures for months. Agriculture in the Pacific Northwest, and potentially across the Northern Hemisphere, could face disruptions. 
economists began modeling ripple effects on trade, technology exports, and food supply chains. The stakes had expanded far beyond Washington. Rainier was no longer just a regional threat. It had become a global concern, a reminder that Earth's systems are interconnected and that the awakening of one volcano can send shockwaves across continents. The red alert has transformed everyday life into a tense waiting game. Every tremor, every plume of steam, every spike in gas emissions is scrutinized as though it might be the final warning. Scientists work in shifts, their eyes fixed on screens filled with seismic data, knowing that a single line of code in their models could mean the difference between safety and catastrophe. Residents, meanwhile, live in suspended animation. Emergency kits sit by the door. Cars remain fueled and ready. Families rehearse evacuation plans again and again, their futures hinging on sirens that may sound in the middle of the night. Best case scenarios offer some comfort. Rainier could release its pressure in smaller eruptions or settle back into dormancy after weeks of seismic restlessness. Worst case scenarios, however, are devastating. A full-scale eruption could blanket Washington in ash, choke rivers with lahars, and bring infrastructure to its knees. One truth unites both scientists and residents. Rainier has awakened, and the future cannot be taken for granted. The mountain that has watched silently over the Pacific Northwest for millennia is speaking again. Its voice rumbles through the earth, its breath steams into the sky, and its warning is clear. The world waits, holding its breath, for what comes next.